world. Trisha O'Connor and Frida Reba Dorsey here. How am I going to get in here? How am I even going to get in here with all this stuff? Uh, what do we see here? We're looking at my uh, cork bark oak. My corcus super. And uh, I've had this tree. This is one of the. This is one of my oldest. This is one of the trees I've had the longest. Um, I got this from a uh, bonsai garden about 30 miles from here, and uh, the gentleman who ran this garden, I believe, has handed this over to his son and has since passed away. This was uh, started, I believe, by Johnny Cedar uh, at Groveway Bonsai at Groveway Bonsai, which I think is still there. Um, in the time that I've had this tree, what we're going to do tonight is a little bit of styling. I'm going to, going to do a little bit of pinching or pruning back. And I've been trying to do this clip, clip and grow. And for the most part, I might want to add a wire or two. Nothing, nothing too crazy. But what we have here is uh, when I got the tree, when I bought the tree home, like whenever I first saw the tree at the at the nursery, one it was during the beginning of COVID. We had just entered lockdown. That particular nursery had sent everybody, or that particular bonsai garden. I'm not sure, but I believe if I have this story straight, had sent everybody home for a, you know for a few months, and um, they were on some sort of skeleton crew to water and to and to take care of and to take care of the trees. And I was also looking at a bunch of maples there that were just some of the most exquisite looking maples I'd ever, I'd ever seen. Um, and so I knew that somebody was doubling back to take care of those maples. There's no way those guys were uh, looking like they hadn't missed the water. But this looks like maybe it had. And it's, it's a cork bark oak. They are known to be drought resistant. So I could kind of at the time, whether this was my imagination or not, I could in my mind's eye see people running through there um, a couple of times a day to try to keep up, keep up with the watering and watering heavily all the maples and then watering whatever pines they have. And then looking at the cactus and looking at the oaks and stuff and splashing a little water that way and then coming back the next day. So what I first noticed was like a couple of little dead leaves. Actually, it wasn't kind of like that. It was, I just noticed a few dead leaves and the tree is always exchanging leaves out that it's an evergreen. So that wasn't, didn't really cause any alarm, but I saw that it was probably about to suffer from dieback. And I felt like this was a good time to take on this tree because I was going, it, it looked to me like something that was impressive without being finished. So I wouldn't have to feel like I would just be at all snooty and buying a finished tree. But at the same, and I've also done that. But um, but I would be able to bring in a lot because, you know, there was still stuff left to do. So, okay. So I brought the tree home and that's whenever I noticed one lesson that some of those dead leaves I'd noticed were uh, lacing their way in and out of the tree and we're all a part of the same few limbs so we didn't just you know it wasn't like the tree lost um a couple of twigs or a couple of leaves it's like i started cutting back things that were whole that were whole limbs and um and i didn't know doodly squat about how i wanted to style this thing yet none of those none of those chops were were styling choices it was literally uh, had more dieback than I'd realized once I got it home and started looking at it. But that that didn't really uh, disappoint me as much as it worried me because I didn't know I didn't know what it was that I needed to be doing to straighten it out and and to make it better. So something else. So what happened then was is I read that they are uh, drought resistant and so I was concerned about overwatering everything then 
Um, so I started sparingly watering the tree. I didn't necessarily, I didn't necessarily learn about feeding of anything right then. I felt like I had a lot to learn about a lot of things and uh, didn't really want to just go jumping off into the deep end uh, half cocked, so to speak. So what I did was, was I just tried to water the tree, wire the tree and uh, wait for spring to see what choices it, it pushed out. And come spring, it did push out some new choices. And uh, by the end of the summer, all of the, uh, all the stuff that it had pushed out was way, way too long. And uh, closer to the tree, it began to die back. Um, it was probably a little under potted. It was uh, also, I wasn't feeding the tree and it wasn't, it, it didn't have enough probably to sustain everything that it was flushing out. And it wanted to be an apical, an apical, an apical dominant tree. So it, um, so it would put out new shoots and that stuff would end up at the end of the summer becoming pom-poms on the end. And those pom-poms on the end weren't, weren't very nice to look at. It's the kind of thing you would definitely kind of want to cut off. But on the other hand, we weren't looking at enough of anything to go cutting off anything. So that didn't exactly feel like the answer either. What I'm doing here is the tree is full of little salmon, little salmon colored shoots. And I'm trying not to chop them too much, but uh, I'm cutting the tips of them off so that they can vibricate out. And at the same time, I'm making my decisions because they haven't started elongating, elongating. I'm making my decisions on where to make these cuts on this, on these little twigs based on where I want the, the new branch to come out. It will come out on the direction of the last leaf standing. So where do we want it? Over there. That way. That was the last minute decision made there. I've already got all of those tips done. So there's four little tips right there that are going to uh, make four more, if not eight more. Um, what finally worked when it came to this tree, when it, when it comes to cork bark oaks, was giving it more water. It doesn't matter that it can, that it's water resistant. It would certainly appreciate and would sustain better with more water. The other thing was when I started feeding, when I started feeding the tree, I began to get much better, much better results. And uh, it started flushing out a lot more. It started back budding more. So for a little while, I kept those pom-poms around to see at the end of the day, just what, what would become of them. And uh, as they got another year older and another year older, they were not in any hurry to back bud while all the new stuff that was coming up, because two things happened. One, I started feeding the tree, like I just said, and two, I started doing what you see me doing now. A little bit of pruning on the tips or pinching, and, uh, and we start getting more back buds, and it will vibricate off both of those things. Uh, with my cypress trees, I'm more likely to cut something off and then get two of those. With the oak, what happens is, is you've got a branch 
and it's you got a branch and it's got a leaf and a leaf and a leaf and wherever you cut it off the last leaf from that node a branch will come out so you decide when you're looking at the branch do i want the branch to be this way do i want the fork to come off that way and um leave that leaf that's pointed in that way last thing and that's what you will most of the time get which is a cool thing once you know that um but so the reason the pruning the tips works is the uh top the top of the branches the ends of the branches collect hormones and and those hormones dictate where all the energy of the tree goes. Um, so when trees want to be big, all of their energy is going to where all those hormones are locked up in those, in those branch tips. If you then go through and cut them, cut the tips, it releases that hormone, that oxen. And from that oxen, uh, it's like a flush of hormones all over the tree. And then all the other branches and limbs will have some say, you know, they're all like, all bets are off. The thing that thought that it was, that one branch that thought that it was the apex of the tree. Uh, has just gotten, has just something has just happened to that. And so now there are new branches in town. Okay, a little bit of copper. When I tried wiring this tree before, I found that I was trying to a lot of times wire the, the really new growth and uh, the wire couldn't stay on. I was just really fighting it. Uh, I was fighting it all the way around. It's like it would dig in, but it wouldn't be trained. It's like, you know, constantly, constantly, constantly trying to, uh, trying to deal with the wire, not, not actually uh, causing the branch to keep the bend that you want to keep but it was constantly digging in because it it would grow fatter but stay but stay mushy I guess I don't know so it was on again off again I finally at one point decided this is a thing that's going to make some sort of cork bark maybe I should be less uh, less concerned jump over I just jumped over a, a couple of branches there that's kind of I don't know. So I finally tr decided to be less concerned with uh, it digging in because this is going to be uh, a tree with a lot of bark on it. I figured, you know, it'll cover it up. Well, I'm still seeing those wire scars. And uh, I'm not really sure I'm not too cool with it. I gotta say, I'm not too cool with it. I'm, I'm okay with it on my pine. I'm not okay with it here because here it looks to me like wire scars. On the pines, it doesn't. Or it does, but there's something I know to do about it that I don't know if I can get away with on this guy. More on that later. Okay, I'm just going to stop with that. Um, in result, in the last couple of years, since I started feeding the tree bio gold, and uh, I keep it on there on the base, I've got it all off now because I carry it in here, but it's laying on the tray off to the side so I won't knock it off and feed it to the dog. Um, Uh, 
So I, I would say that the prunings were a huge help and the, um, and the ball goals and upping the watering was also a, uh, a really big help. So after that, I started getting multiple flushes out of the tree per summer. I mean, my original idea, my original idea on this guy was to uh, watch it feed, let it flush out in the spring, let it go nuts, let all the stuff grow long and start putting back some of the energy we were losing when I didn't know what I was doing. And, uh, and then at some point, at some point in the fall, we would cut back all of that. I wasn't able to do that. It would put out so many new shoots in so many directions that they would all end up being, you know, super, super duper long. And I wasn't cool with letting that long gate out all summer, making the nodes farther and farther apart on the little bit that I wanted to keep. So I found myself cutting that stuff off super early, you know, mid early in the spring and letting it flush out a second run with nodes that were tighter and closer back to the trunk because I didn't let them, I didn't let them run out that far. Then uh, I would, you know, kind of sit back and go, well, at some point the tree will probably slow down a bunch and calm down and uh, we'll just start harnessing energy. No, nah, it just kept flushing out and flushing out and I'm not complaining, not complaining a bit. I, uh, I'm pretty happy with the way, when push came to shove, I'm pretty happy with the way that all turned out. As you can see, this tree has about the amount, a little bit more foliage on it now than when I brought it home. But remember how I started this story when I brought it home, I ended up having to cut like a third of it off because it was uh, dead. So, uh, um, I'm going to grab some wire and I'm going to put some, uh, a few, I'm going to put a, a, a bend in some of these guys up here. And uh, we're not going to do a lot of wiring, but we are going to do, we are going to do a little, just a little. Let's see, that is too heavy. Go with this. I want this. supplied together. I had one little I had one little piece of wire ready but I didn't have but I didn't have a piece cut for this. What I'm about to do now. Keep that. There we go. This is our Friday night, Friday night at Frida's. And uh, using copper wire on my Quarkus Suber. Right now at this stage in the game, I'm still just, I'm, I'm still pretty good with just uh, letting as much as possible grow out and uh you know i'm not letting i'm not letting any anything that we don't want fly like you know far branches or anything like that but but as far as any of the other i'm not being super picky we're looking it's kind of like i'm doing my coastal oak right now too we're not being real real picky about about uh pruning right now we're making, we're trying to make more design choices. I need to anchor that. 
on to something. Get out of there. That's a long one. There's everything is just too far away. I'm gonna have to try to anchor it onto something ridiculously long. And I do not. All right, fine, whatever. I'll do that. So I'm just gonna do some enormous lasso over here. There. And then I'm coming down about as far below there as I can possibly get. I put this tree in this spot uh, a day ago, two days ago, two days ago, and plan to do this video, but I have had a, uh, a bit of a head cold and uh, I've just been kind of taking uh, sinus medicine and sleeping it off. Today, tonight's Friday night. We're going into our weekend. I'm still uh, a kid when it comes to weekends. So, uh, and, and I have a proper weekend to enjoy. So, let the good times roll. Bon temps roulé. Okay. That There wasn't it there was not an easier way for me to do that, I don't think. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. That's probably about all I'm gonna do with this guy tonight. I wanted to do those, I wanted to trim back those tips. I wanted to add a couple of pieces of wire to this tree, but this is basically I had said I was gonna do this clip and grow and for the most part I have but I'm not so locked into it that I'm gonna let something grow straight up when it could actually help me if I pull it down I mean I can cut it if it's growing straight up but in that case I thought that bridge would probably do me more good if I flattened it out um, meanwhile we got all this other I feel pretty good about I feel pretty good about cutting back most of this other and it's just gonna go right back out there on it's just gonna go right back out on the bench and we will continue to uh, make buds and push out and push out new growth for the rest of the summer uh, out here the way that our weather is sometimes October is our hottest month and uh, whereas that's not a lot of fun from a pine trees, from a pine tree standpoint, um, the oaks love it. Real, the oaks and I think the cypress trees are pretty into the, are pretty much into the higher temps. So I look forward to watching this flush out more. I've got all these little little pockets of, of uh, foliage here and they uh, do look rather pad like not exactly by the design I mean I am shaping it some but uh, we're we're or we are still in our I want to cut this back sooner we're still in what I would consider our teenage awkward years here for the styling of this tree but I'm really happy about the uh, leaps and bounds that this tree has made in the last two summers. It's just that little, 
that little up. What it did, what actually helped, what I, what I found I think that helped the most was uh, a Bonsai Mirage video about uh, cutting back the tips for the oxen. And it was also about that time that I started using bio gold to try to improve the health of the uh, of my Japanese black pines to get some greener color into them. And that little one-two punch turned this guy around. And otherwise, I would say a cork bark oak or a corcus super is probably a really good first tree. Um, if you can water it, you can keep it. You know, I um, pruned it wrong, didn't know how to prune it, cut off a lot of dead stuff. Well, there was nothing wrong with doing that. But then spent the next year learning how not to grow stuff back. And uh, with a shadow of his former self, I guess it still had enough stored energy that it could hang out and put up with my foolishness as long as I kept watering it. And then once, once we uh, added a little bit of fertilizer, and then had the guts to start trimming, trimming back some of our new tips. It's kind of hard to commit to cut back tips when they're the only things on the tree. And um, it wasn't quite that bad, but I was kind of going, well, if it keeps going that way, that's the way that's gonna look. And then what are you gonna do? Uh, you're not gonna have a plan left when you've only got two twigs left on the tree, kind of the thought. But it never really got that bad. It responded well. It, I would say it responded very well to feeding and it responded very well to me kicking up the watering a little more than I had. And uh, January 6th, I repotted this guy. I think I might still have, have could have done a better job on the sheen, which the sheen is the part of the, uh, is the part of the base of the root directly under. It's kind of like the central nervous system or something, or, or maybe the gut health of the tree, right down in there. And I probably could have done a better job of getting the substrate out of that area and cleaning that out. I wish I would have. Also, this pot, I don't know. I've always felt like this was slightly underpotted. Um, maybe it's not, but I've always felt that way. And I haven't really seen anything, anybody else do anything else to make me think different. But uh, my intentions are just to keep pruning back the ends of all of these branches, continue to feed and continue to water my cork bark oak. And uh, I could, you know, quite, I could without, with very little trouble, let any of those little pink salmon -y shoots that I saw, let those things flush right out and have a tree out to here by fall, right? But that would all be long branches. And I'm building it. I'm building it. I'm building it, guys. Um, you know, a couple of nodes at a time. Instead of just leaping out here and then cutting it back that far, I'm coming out here and cutting it back to there and then letting two branches make another little inch of, and it's really really full and at some point I will go back in here and start thinning stuff out and that'll be fun too there's almost going to be too much of it to be able to see to be able to prune it but that's still going to fall back to our basics right now I'm letting everything kind of go um, the stuff that goes straight up, oaks do that, so we just kind of let that slide right now. The stuff that's going straight down, they kind of like doing that too. The stuff that goes straight back, they kind of like doing that too. That's all stuff that whenever I've got more branches than we need, and we can start um, exercising some free will and some choices, we can start making, we can, the ones that we leave, won't really, the ones that we take won't hurt us and the ones that we leave will, um, will, will enhance the look and the lattice and the, and the uh, look of our tree. So yeah, I've really had a good time. I've really had a good time with this tree. It is this bark is, you know, I'm not pretending to grip it. It's really, really solid stuff. And, um, 
These are very hardy trees. Um, I'm pretty sure, I think my feeling is, is that what I will, what, what we're going to be working towards is I'm gonna work this, this stuff down into here, this stuff down into here, this down into here, and down into there. And there'll still be some negative space in there some, there'll still be some light, but we're really looking forward to, to filling this all out more. And um, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking maybe a third of the way there, maybe a quarter, I'm not really sure. I don't really feel like it matters so much. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the ride, I would say. And uh, it's been, it's been good so far. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Um, tomorrow will be Saturday. We'll be doing another little Saturday drop. And then uh, after, I'm not sure, we'll probably do something something maybe a little bit more pine-like, but um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching.